this series, we've been going through different verses in the book of Proverbs. And Proverbs is such a wonderful book. It is uh, so applicable to our daily life uh, on how to be blessed and how to be a blessing to other people. And one of my favorites is Proverbs 13, 20. And this is one that my kids can recite from memory uh, because I tried to pound it into their little heads uh, as they were growing up uh, because it's that important. And the ESV simply says, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools suffers harm. And that's pretty common sense, right? We, when we hang around people that are making good choices, we tend to have good things happen. And when we hang around people making bad choices, we tend to have bad things happen. Um, we like to think that we develop our relationships based on this kind of criteria, but the reality is uh, a lot of times, unfortunately, we build our friendships based on the fact that the other people accept us, uh, not because they're necessarily good for us. So who is the fool that's being talked about in Proverbs? I think biblically it's one of two people. Uh, the first is someone who does not love God nor obeys God. Uh, this is an unbeliever, someone who has not accepted Christ and, and therefore does not have the Holy Spirit indwelt in them. And because of that, uh, everything that they look at, their view is always going to be a worldly view. Uh, when they make decisions, it's going to be based on worldly gain or worldly losses. Um, does not mean at all that they're bad people, um, but their view is going to oftentimes be contrary to the Word of God because the worldly view is contrary to the world of God. The word God. Um, the second person is going to be uh, somebody completely different. That's going to be a believer, someone who has accepted Christ but has turned his back on the Lord and whose life is categorized by um, blatant, unrepentant sin. And this is somebody that's very dangerous because discipline is coming their way and you don't want to be standing next to them when that happens. Now, Paul goes a little deeper in 1st and 2nd Corinthians when he talks uh, about these two uh, particular fools that Proverbs brings up. Um, in 2nd Corinthians 6.14, he touches on the unbeliever. He says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? And he's not saying at all that you're not supposed to associate with unbelievers okay that you're not supposed to have relationships at all with unbelievers uh, because that's not true our, our we're, we have a mission here and a big part of that is sharing the good news of jesus with those that need it uh um, helping you know one beggar helping another beggar find where the bread is uh, so we're not to disassociate what we are not to do is yoke with one another okay we're not supposed to develop deep relationships with unbelievers. They should not be in our core group of uh, close, close-knit friends that help us make decisions. Um, and he's going to touch a little bit more on that as we go to uh, 1 Corinthians uh, in 5 9. He spells it out a little bit better. He says, I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. And he clears it up when he talks about unbelievers. He goes, Not at all, meaning the, the people of this world who are immoral or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters. In that case, you would have to leave this world. So he makes it clear, we're supposed to have relationships with unbelievers. We're not supposed to yoke with them. They're not supposed to be tight. But watch why his tone changes when he moves to a believer, someone who has accepted Christ. He says, but now I'm writing to you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or sister, but is sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater, a slander, a drunkard or a swindler. Do not even associate. He says you cut them off. Uh, he even says after that, do not even eat with such people. You can't even have lunch with them. Uh, these are people who dishonor God with their lives. Um, these are people who are in habitual sin, not not sin. Uh, you know where we all you know we all sin, we all fall short of the glory of God. We're not talking about that. We're talking about a significant habitual unrepentant sin that characterizes their life. When people look at them, they don't see Jesus, they see the sin. Uh, and God says, look, they're so bad, you're supposed to be cut off from them. You're not supposed to have anything to do with them. Um, so and why does God say this about either one of these? Um, you know, Why does he want us so, so badly to not have those in our core group? And I think it's because God is very possessive of us. Uh, he's possessive of where our focus is. And our focus should be on him all the time, you know, for our good and for his glory. Uh, when we are having close relationships with people who have a worldly view, we're going to tend to have a worldly view ourselves and focus on that. When we are having relationships with people who claim to love God, 
but live contrary to that and dishonor him, uh, our focus is going to be pulled away from God's glory onto something else. So what do we do with this? Um, I would encourage you to pull out a list of your friends, uh, not just your acquaintances. Pull out a list of your close, close friends. Put it under a magnifying glass and say, do any of these these two types of people, these unbelievers or these uh, unrepentant believers, do either one of these line up on this list with anybody I have here? Uh, and if you find any of those people on that list of close, tight-knit friends, I would encourage you to begin to cull them away from you. Okay, God's word is very clear about that. That's not what he wants for you. That's not good in your decision-making process. So I would encourage you to uh, to look at those and begin to make the decisions you need to make. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for the book of Proverbs. Uh, Lord, thank you that it's so pointed uh, and it's so clear about what we're supposed to do, Lord. And I just pray that you would uh, allow us to have the wisdom to look through our friendships. Uh, Lord, give us the courage to remove friends that should not be there that are detrimental to us moving forward. Lord, we want our relationships to be intentional and we want them to bring you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day.